Hello and welcome to the demo about uh, Webload and Selenium. In this demo, I would show you how you can use Selenium uh, web driver with Webload load testing tool and how you can mix them and work with them together. Selenium, or its for its newer name, web driver, is an open source platform that automates browser. So Selenium has a script and it can run a different browser. It can execute uh, the script on that browser and it automates, it can support many different browsers, Chrome, Firefox, IE, um, and it can run scripts on them. And Webload is uh, RadView's load testing tool, um, which similarly also there is a, a script that automates user actions in a website so both of these scripts simulate users using uh, websites, um, but in different ways. So you can write this uh, Selenium script directly in our Webload IDE, or you can export it from the Selenium IDE. And lastly, you can write the code in Java and then use it in Webload. I'll show those three options today. So writing the script directly in uh, in Webload, so Webload uh, has a kind of a building block for Selenium that you can use and directly write uh, Selenium code directly there. Okay, so let's see how we can write a Selenium script from scratch. We have here the real client's uh, building block, Selenium driver, so I can drag the Selenium driver here. And I would select here which browser I want to use and what's the base URL. From here, I'm going to use my test website. So this would get the base URL. I can also add here report statistic command. This is our command to add, uh, to get statistics from the browser. So what that, that does, that gets from the browser, the navigation timing API uh, statistic. I will show you later what it looks like, but otherwise we have very, uh, not very grand on our statistics. So we want to use those. And also we can just write any Java commands to the driver, like find element by link, login and click it. Okay, and then we'll do driver quit. Okay, and let's see how it runs. So as it, you can see, it opens my website and it's clicking the login. Great. Then the other option I have is I can use the Selenium IDE. The uh, Selenium ID is a Firefox plugin uh, that is built for recording Selenium script. The advantage of using the Selenium ID is that you don't need to write the script manually. The Selenium ID automatically records the actions. But the biggest problem with it is that Selenium has dropped support for it. And because Firefox has changed and it only works in older versions of Firefox. So if you want to use it, you need to download an older version of Firefox. It's still possible, but it's a bit uh, not convenient. And once you have the Selenium IDE, on top of it, you install the Webload Selenium Formatter plugin, and that allows you to export uh, the script into Webload Speak. Let me show you what I mean. So this is Firefox, and this is here my Selenium IDE plugin. Now I would navigate to my homepage and start recording. So if I click on the login link and click my username and password and click login, so all these actions are So all these actions are, are stored here to open the URL, click on that link, type the, whatever needs to be done and so on. So I can run it here. So 
So you see it's doing the login for me. Okay, so once I'm happy with my script, I can export it into a web load format. And this is because I have the web load exporter plugin. I now have export test case as web load. So let me save it. Okay, so now we'll take this file and paste it into web load. And as you can see, this is the same command that we've seen there, but it's the web load syntax. So it creates a driver, it uh, opens the base URL, it finds the login button, uh, it finds uh, the login text page and writes whatever I want it there. And the other thing it does, it does this report statistics command, which uh, reports navigation timing statistics from the browser. Let's run it. Great, so now I have the now I have the script running. The advantage of writing of using the script in web load is that it's very easy to edit it. So for example, if I want to add transactions, I can just use the UI and add a transaction to say you know this is the login action i can just easily add transactions here and also if i want to parameterize to change the actual username and password I can directly use web load parameterization manager and to get that information from a file. It's very easy to do it and to change things directly in web load. Yeah, so it's it's very easy to do it if you're writing it from scratch or you're using the Selenium IDE. The last option I'm gonna talk about today is using uh, the web driver directly. So if you have an existing Java code or you just prefer to use Java code directly with web driver, then you can also combine that with, with web load. Um, we can just execute any um, Java code just as is, but then you would be missing the transactions and the statistics from web load that you want to get in a load testing environment. The way you do it, you get, you use our uh, wrapper around the web driver. So you include our, there is a jar that is in part of WebLoad, which you can include. And then you wrap your Java web driver with our WebLoad driver. And the WebLoad driver is, is it implements the web driver interface. So you can do anything you want to it or even directly to the underlying driver. But on top of it, you can do things like begin transaction and transaction and add parameterization. For example, you don't want to use the same login name every time. So you can use the power of web load uh, to use parameterization. And the good thing about this, the web load driver is it works completely transparent when it's not in a web load environment. So you can have the same script to run it in your regular Java uh, environment that would just, whenever it encounters a web load specific uh, command, it would just ignore it. But when it's running under a web load environment, it would do the command. So the transaction, the statistics, all of those would work when it's running inside web load, but they would just not do anything when it's running in web load, in Java, sorry. So let's see it in action. So this is my Java environment. I'm just using Eclipse, but you can use whatever you want. And, and this is a sample, kind of a simple a web driver example. I have a my web driver and here I instantiate it to be a Firefox driver. And then I'm gonna navigate to just Google and send some keys to search for cheese and print the title and wait for it to be whatever it is and that's it. So this is kind of a standard Selenium test. And also here it's it's specifically it's a JUnit test which is also something that many people use. You don't have to, but you can. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the web load driver to it. So I'm gonna wrap my 
Firefox driver with a new web load driver. And so nothing needs to be changed. Everything can just work as is. I can just run it like now. But now since it's a web driver, I can also add other things to it. So for example, here I'm navigating to the home page. I can do driver dot begin transaction my home page. And also once the page is opened, I can do driver dot report statistics and that would report uh, the navigation timing statistics to web load home page now we can end transaction And I can also from here to use parameterization. So instead of using hard coded search term cheese, I can make sure that because in load testing, we don't want to hit just cached data. We want it to be different every time. So I can replace that. Let's do string search term. So I can do get value. And so the parameter would be um, file search term. So this is something I'm going to define later in web load, but I also want to give it default value. The reason is I want it to still be able to run inside Java. So if it's not running in web and there's no parameterization manager, at least use this value. So now nothing has really changed in my script. I can still run it as is in Java okay, to just do exactly like it did before. But now I can also run it in, in a web context. So let me show you how do they do it. I first want to export that as a jar and we'll put it in in where webload can read it and then we'll run it in webload. So in general, webload can call Java very easily. If you have a jar that you that we're going to have access to, then you can you can refer to a Java class by using the packages. So if you do, for example, a equals new packages Java string, that would generate a Java class of type string or whatever class that you have. If you use the fully qualified domain name, so I can call my um, my Java that has the J on it, I can just call directly call any functions on it. But specifically because it's J on it, in this example, I can use a building block. So I can just do J on it runner. I'm just going to enter the fully qualified name of my class, which was and I can also export uh, output the uh, standard out if I want. And that's basically it. The script is ready. We can write now. I can add other things to it if I want. Transactions, JavaScript, uh, for parameterization, I need to create the parameters, but the script is basically ready. The next step is to run it under load. So I'll open the console. Running a Selenium script in the console is just like running a web load script. We can run it alone or we can create a mix and then we can run a web load and a Selenium script together. Sometimes that's useful. Let me just select my agenda. And I define the load writers and schedule just like a regular agenda.
So as the agenda is running, we will start getting statistics. And some of them are the regular web statistics like transactions. So those are the transactions we defined in the script. And also we have the Selenium trans statistics, which are gonna be here. Those are the page report statistics. So we have for each page we defined all the navigation timing statistics. Some information about the statistics. So we collect the navigation timing measurements and then we, we create statistics off of them. So some of them are regular statistics you can get like DNS time, connection times, and some are the user level statistics that are you can only get with a browser like the DOM content loaded, on load events, etc. Now let's talk a bit about other consideration we have when using uh, Selenium. So first of all, there is a question about which browser to use or even whether to use a real browser or a headless browser. Selenium can run a headless browser, which doesn't render the UI. The advantages of a headless browser, it's scalability, it's more scalable than a, a full browser. But the downside is that the statistics are not full. It's not a full browser, which is kind of missing the point of using Selenium. So there is a trade-off here. And the other thing to consider is whether to use a web load script or a Selenium script. Um, Selenium script is running the real browsers, uh, but the web load scripts are far uh, more efficient and then much more scalable. So usually for high load, it's not reasonable to run Selenium scripts. Um, and so maybe for small load, you can use Selenium load and for a longer one, you can use web load. And also there is a hybrid option. So run a few Selenium script to get the Selenium statistics and, and have many more web load users making the actual load on the server. Uh, last thing I wanted to point about is uh, about troubleshooting. Most of the issues we've seen around using Selenium is to do with the jars. So you need to make sure that your jar that includes the class you have is copied into the right directory. And you need to make sure that all the dependencies that it have, if it has, are also copied there. And make sure that there are no duplicates. So if your dependencies, let's say, is uh, commons logging dot one, and there is also a logging already, a web load, commons logging dot two there, then it's going to be a conflict and you need to delete the older one. That's usually what the issues are about. That's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can download the web load and try it. Bye bye.